National Quilter Circle, and Creative Crochet Corner have all teamed up to provide a week full of live demonstrations and a bundle of free Halloween patterns and one really fun recipe. So make sure to download the free patterns and today's recipe by clicking the link in the description. And of course, if you have missed any of the live events from the mini series this week, all of the videos are available for replay at any time. Now, if you have questions during today's event, that's what I'm here for, please leave your comments in the blue chat box below or in the chat on Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to keep an eye on your questions. I'm going to ask them as they come in if it pertains to this step of the recipe that we're on right there. And if you have general questions, you can ask those too. Usually we have some time at the end of the project to get to some of those before we say goodbye. Now, that being said, it's time to bring on today's cook. We have Robin Miller joining us today. Hello, Robin. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Leah. And thank you, everyone that has joined. I'm super excited to be here today and to be a part of Craftween. Yes. And the grand finale. <laughs> it's going to be a fantastic end to a very fun week. Now, Robin, I'd like you to start off by introducing yourself, giving us a little bit of background on you before we get started, and then give us a brief intro into what it is that we're cooking with you today. Sounds great. Okay, thanks, Leah. Um, again, I'm super thrilled to be here today. I am a big fan of Craftsy. I have a couple of shows, Efficient Weeknight Cooking and Real Life Cooking on Craftsy. I do these live events, and I'm excited to announce that I will be filming more content in November in studio, so more fantastic recipes are coming your way from my kitchen to yours. So I'm really excited about that. But a little bit of a background about me. I have been a food writer cookbook author and nutritionist for a really long time, since for 25 plus years. I've been doing it my entire career. I um, have been working in magazines. I have TV show on Food Network for five years, which is running on Discovery Plus. I am currently writing and photographing my 11th cookbook. So I'm really excited about that. I have done 10 other cookbooks, but I never took the pictures. and being able to be in there and take the pictures of my own food, knowing what I want to pull out and highlight has been amazing. It's been such a thrill for me. And I'm kind of an amateur photographer that has taken the time over the last year to learn it and, um, and challenge myself to get better at it. So I understand for those of you that are quilters and, and knitters and sewers that are coming in here, maybe not cooks, uh, we all can learn something new, and um, and so photography is my thing, and I'm loving it. So it's so much fun. Um, I have a column in the Arizona Republic. I live in Arizona now, and that goes out to USA Today Food. So I have that every two weeks. 11th cookbook, two shows, two teenagers, one in college, one a senior. Um, and I blog, write recipes every single day. So for those of you that follow along that know me, robinmillercooks.com, every day something new pops up today. I think I have two new things out there. It's National Nut Day. So I would like taking advantage of all my nut recipes. I'm sure I'll do a couple more. So that's pretty much anything I forgot you can find on my website. Um, but that's where I am now, just super busy and loving it. And um, today we're going to celebrate the kickoff, what I think of Halloween as the kickoff into um, the holidays. It's really the beginning of the holidays. I, uh, and in fact, some people don't even call it any Halloween anymore, what do you, what, but schools aren't allowed to call it that. So whatever they call it, spirit, um, I love the spirit. So today we're going to kick off that spirit with my jack-o'-lantern stuffed beef taco. It's like a beef taco filling and they're jack-o'-lantern peppers, which look like jack-o'-lanterns, but they're really just orange bell peppers and they're super cute. And what I love about this recipe is, yes, you can make them jack-o'-lanterns, which we're gonna do today, but you moving forward, you don't have to. You could, these can just be looking like pumpkins or you can do all green bell peppers. And I have an example of what you could do moving forward to kind of mix it up and have fun with these all year long, not just for Halloween. So Leah, should I get started? Do we have any questions to start off? I can talk about what the ingredients are. We don't have any questions at the moment, but just a reminder, if you weren't here at the very top of the hour, that question box is for you. If you have questions for Robin about what we're cooking today, drop those into the chat box. General questions are welcome as well. We'll get to those towards the end uh, when we're finished cooking with the time that we have left. Um, and I will keep an eye on that for Robin so she can focus on getting us through this cooking project. Now I know Robin, she said before we went live that this is a great entry into cooking as well. 
well. So this is a great recipe to get started with. If yes. you're new to cooking, tasty recipe, you just want something on theme. So I'm going to let Robin get us started with step one, which I believe is going through what we need. Yes, step one, what we need. And this is, again, super versatile and um, super easy. So I'm not, it's not a complicated recipe. Do not hesitate to throw questions out there. I can cook and answer at the same time. I mean, you know, when you're a parent, you kind of have to do it anyway. You always have to be all over the place. So what you will need is I called for four to six bell peppers. The reason I gave that is because some bell peppers are quite large, like this one. Um, and some are on the smaller size, which you'll see when I show the finished product, I found some kind of smaller green bell peppers. And you might be serving four, you might be serving six. The larger bell peppers might be enough. If you have kids, might be enough to serve two, cut it in half, open them up, and you have the beef filling on both sides. So that's why I call for four bell peppers. I call for a pound of lean ground beef. I love cooking with the 93 to 96% lean ground beef, but that's often the most expensive. So anything works. If you have 80%, 80, whatever you find, whatever you find on sale, if you buy the big bulk, which I just started doing as well, um, I buy a big bulk and then I split it in half. If it's two pounds, split it in half, put a pound in the freezer and work with the pound. Um, the only difference will be, you may just have to drain off some fat when we get to the step of browning the beef. Then in terms of the seasonings, there is a tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and half a teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. So these are spice rack staples in my world um, and probably yours. If not, you can substitute a quarter cup of your favorite taco seasoning. So old El Paso and Ortega. They make those sold right next to the tortilla shells in the grocery store. One pound of ground beef. They use a quarter cup of their blend, which is a packet if you just buy the packet for a pound of ground beef. So you can skip all the herbs and spices and just use that if you already have that. My uh, concern, not concern, my, um, my uh, advice if you're using the taco seasoning is to see, is to taste for salt before you add salt because some of those seasoning packets are pretty high in sodium i love them but i always check before i salt my uh, my foods then a cup of tomato sauce just the regular stuff you can get in a carton or a can in the grocery store if you don't have tomato sauce but you have crushed tomatoes or pureed tomatoes that also works and then um cooked rice a cup to a cup and a quarter of cooked rice i pre-cooked it yesterday Great for leftover rice if you have it. You can also get the 90 second pouch rice, 90 seconds in the microwave, and that's a really good amount for four stuff, four to six stuffed peppers. And then one and a half cups of cheddar cheese or a Mexican blended cheese, which I love because you get equal parts sharpness, like from the cheddar and meltiness from the Monterey Jack and whatever other cheeses, all uh, the Mexican blends very slightly but they all have equal parts meltability and sharpness. So that's why I love them. I call for them all the time. Um, if you have cheddar and mozzarella, you could get the same effect. Cheddar and Monterey Jack or Pepper Jack would add a little heat. So um, that's what I call for there. And you'll see that when that goes into the mixture. And that's it. That's really all you need, a baking dish or a cast iron skillet to bake them in. And that's the whole ingredient list. So uh, pretty straightforward, pretty basic. If you want to make these, if you're not beef fans, you want to do it turkey and ground chicken, that works as well. So go for it if you already have ground turkey. This would be great. And I will show you how to make the jack-o'-lanterns uh, with two of the peppers. I hope I do a good job because I might be a little nervous in front of you all and take my I'll take my time. But so you start off with um, a clean bell pepper. So rinse it, get that sticker off if it had a sticker off of it. I like to make sure because. I don't know about you, but I see people, you know, drop things in the grocery store. You know, they roll off the, the display and then they put them back. So the first thing I do when I get my produce home is wash it uh, because I've also been one of those ones. I think I did it this. I upset the broccoli this week and I pulled the bottom one out and all the upper ones went down. So just think about that when you're thinking about um, skipping the rinsing step. So the first thing you do is you cut off the top of the bell pepper and 
I keep the tops. If you look at a lot of um, bell pep stuffed pepper recipes, they discard the top. I love, first of all, I love how pretty it looks. And this is a perfect stem, but also it's food. So I like to roast the lids right alongside the bell peppers and enjoy them as well, right on, on the side. So, or you can keep the roasted pepper for something for another future dish. So there's little seeds attached to the inside. I have a little discard bowl here. So you first just remove the seeds with your hand, with your fingers. You don't need a paring knife or anything. The seeds just come right out. And then the same thing with the inside of the bell pepper. You just pull that scent, that core out and the white portion that can be bitter, not always, but it can be bitter um, just by being in association with the seeds. So I remove that as well. And a quick tap will get all the seeds out. And if you start with a bell pepper that does not, can, yeah, does not stand up straight like that, just take a very um, a sharp knife and make it and take a little slice off the bottom without cutting through and making a hole because some of the filling might ooze out and then you want it to stand up straight so it doesn't tip over in the oven. So this one's good. I'll do a second one. I have two more already finished. Now while you're cutting the peppers, we do have a couple questions. Do you have some time? All right, let's talk first about the peppers. Carol wants to know, is there a season for bell peppers? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, bell peppers are available year round, obviously, but you can definitely tell and you know, where, it depends on where you live too, because I have noticed that all the bell peppers in my grocery store have now gone from $2 each to 77 cents each. So obviously there's abundance of peppers in the Southwest where I live in October, um, but they are uh, available year round. What I like to do though, is if I, if I go in with a plan to buy a red bell pepper and it's $2 and the green bell peppers are 65 cents, I'm gonna switch my recipe and I'm gonna go with the green just because the I, bell peppers are sweet and wonderful and um, you know, or I'll do one of each just to save money, but they're pretty much widely available year round. All right, and Kevin's got a question uh, going back to the tomato sauce that you had yes. said in the ingredient list. So Kevin wants to know if I use fresh tomatoes, should I add some tomato paste? Sometimes they're a little less flavorful and more watery. What do you think? Exactly, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm assuming you, you said David, the name? Uh, this is from Kevin. Kevin. So Kevin, I'm assuming you're going to dice up those tomatoes, um, get some of the seeds out. So I don't know if you have Romas or beefsteak or whatever, but yes. So we call for a cup. Say you have a cup of chopped tomatoes. I would add two tablespoons of tomato paste. It not only, uh, it adds richness and body as well as sweetness because um, there's a lot of acidity in the in the just raw tomatoes, so I think it will really help if you add a tablespoon or two of tomato paste to your fresh. And you'll do that while it's simmering in the pan. You can adjust the taste right there. Okay. All right, one more final question I'll ask you while you're still working on the peppers. This comes from, I believe it's Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne asks, what is the difference between the three hump and the four hump peppers? And I'm going to add on, Robin, if you would speak to, do you have a preference for which one you select when you're making a stuffed pepper recipe? Three hump and four hump. I've never heard that. That's so funny. Um, but that makes total sense. That's really funny. No, I selected these yesterday based off... They, they, that they were the similar in size. So they would cook at the same time in the, in the same pot. So one wasn't large. So I had them all lined up in the produce section, all as close as I could get in terms of size. Just like when you're, when you're cutting anything and, and they say, you know, make sure you cut things in uniform sizes and shapes. So they cook at the same time in the same heat and everything cooks, not one isn't overdone and one's still raw. Um, so really for me, it was a visual thing and firmness with no markings, no scarring, no shrivels. Um, that's how I chose the peppers for this and this and all the peppers. So if I'm gonna be using a red bell pepper or a green bell pepper, for example, for, that I'm gonna slice, it really doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfectly shaped like that but I don't want any, any markings, any, anywhere it's been punctured or um, any signs of withering at all. Just fresh, like it just was picked is the, what is what I always go by my eye when for all produce. Um, that's, and I think that's, that's kind of a good way to do it is just always use your eyes and pick something that looks like it was literally just put there. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah. So there's basically no difference then between three or four on the bottom, right? 
Correct. Do I even have, so there's three and four. See, I have a little bit of both. Let's see, what are you? Four. All right. <laughs> Oh, perfect. That's all the questions that are in here for the moment. I'll hold any new ones that come in until the next time we have a moment to ask them. So continue on. It sounds great. And here, just for that three, four hump. So see, they're both, they're both the same. So, so it's funny. Um, my goal was similar in size and one is three and one is four and they're the same size. So that worked out and I didn't even know. Okay. So I'm going to try to make my little jack-o-lantern here. So what I suggest, I'm going to get, get one pick the good, nice flattest side of you see this side would not make a good carving because it's kind of indented this is the flattest side of this pepper and i can see there's a line down the middle It'll be a perfect place for two little triangles little nose maybe a scary mouth so you grab your sharpest paring knife this one i love is ceramic um i i don't know I, i'm a huge fan of ceramic knives i think they're my sharpest and they never need to be sharpened uh, but grab your favorite, even if it has like a, a sharp point and just go for it and just make, so I'm going to, I'm going to nestle this so, on the uh, cutting board so I don't, it doesn't fall out of my hand and I'll make a little triangle for an eye. And you can, if you want, you can mark it out with a uh, toothpick or something. So there's one eye. Can y'all see that? Leah, can they see that? Uh, it looks a little, you've got a little bit of a glare. Can you move it more towards the center of the shot? Yeah, down there is good, yes. Down there, awesome. all right, I'll get another eyeball <laughs> out. And you can make these scary, you can have the kids do it, you can uh, make them happy. It doesn't have to be a face either. I mean, every people or some people are doing witches. So there's the eye, let's see if I can make a crazy mouth. Can you see that down there? Mm -hmm. And then we'll Thank make you. a crazy mouth. So the mouth, I just do squares. I cut out the squares like to make a tooth and then I do the next one. So I'll do so that one's high and one's low. I'll show you what I mean. So I did this little, I did a, a square here and then a square and then I'll go down and do a square and then up and do a square. And then you, I mean, obviously if you've carved a pumpkin, you can, uh, you know how you like your mouth. But I think the kids would tell when my kids were little, we, we, I had them do this because then you get to actually eat your work after I'll do one more little mouth, a little, little square. And you really don't need, you know, when I first was doing this, oh, this looks just like the one in the picture. You can tell I did the one in the picture. <laughs> so there's, can you see that? Lee? Is that good? Little... That looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. You can see it without the glare. So, have some fun with this. You guys are crafters. You probably could do a much better mouth, a much better face. Maybe you could even do some eyebrows and, you know, make it look wicked or hilarious, however you want. Um, and just have fun with it. I'll get one more little uh, tooth out here. And then we'll be ready to start the beef filling. Okay. So, whoop, there goes his eyeball. Okay. So there's my wacky, my wacky one. And then um, I think you get the gist. You can have fun with it. The, the key is the sharp knife. And if you want to do an outline, you can use a toothpick and make a little outline. Or if you have food safe pens, I've done that for things like cakes. When I want to do an outline first, I use a food safe pen and do a little outline so I don't mess up on decorating the cake. Make sense? Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. um, before you move into the next step, Robin, I just want to let our viewers know uh, someone in the chat has been having a little trouble accessing the recipe and our team has placed a link directly to the recipe in the chat box. So if okay. you are also having trouble, go ahead and click on that link. It is in the chat box for you readily available. All right. Thanks, Robin. Cool. For letting cool. that in. Cool. All right. Excellent. Um, okay. So it, this, uh, this is my heavy pan. You can use any skillet you want. I just had this here because I wanted to preheat it while we talked and I knew this wouldn't start to smoke. Um, and I'm going to grab the beef and I'm going to give it a browning in the pan. So I didn't put any oil in. Um, if you have, so I, cause I just seasoned this pan, which means I put it in the oven and tried to, and made it a nonstick pan by coating it with oil and putting it upside down in the oven for two to three hours. Um, so it's seasoned, so it should be nonstick. 
And that's important because this is 93% lean ground beef, which will stick. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're using a higher, uh, higher fat ground beef, you may at some point need to just drain off some fat. Um, I have found when that's necessary that, um, oh, I need some more heat under here. Kind of, this is kind of unpredictable, this little hot plate. Um, I have found that um, draining the meat, because it used to be where you would take, I would take the beef and I would drain it and I'd put it back in the pan. I've noticed now to save a step and save a dirty colander, um, you can tilt the pan, get some paper towels, put it in the corner and just absorb all that grease without having to have a colander and go back and forth from the sink with all that grease going down the drain. So that's another way to remove the fat from the pan, tilt the pan and um, use some paper toweling in the corner where it's puddling and you can get the grease out that way. Any questions for me, Leah, while this meat is uh, cooking? We have two comments and a question. So I'm gonna just let you know right off the bat that Dee says, this is going to be dinner tomorrow. So Yay. thank you for giving us a wonderful uh, weekend recipe to work with. Uh, and then Leanne, Thanks, you're a fantastic instructor, Robin. Oh, um, thank you. About, you mentioned you had two children. Do your yes. children know how to cook? Yes, it's uh, yes. So I wasn't sure because I never let them because I always want to. Uh, and my my um, 18, that now 19 year old went off to college last year. And, um, you know, I'm one of those moms that's like, what do you need? What do you need? All day long. Mom, I'm hungry. Yay! I'm like, I'm gonna make like 40 things. And so I really wasn't sure because they, uh, they haven't, I haven't seen them do a lot of work in the kitchen, but within a, a month, he was said, mom, I have salmon and I have broccoli and we have people coming over. So what should I do? And he took pictures and he sent it to me. So he's in the learning stage, but the passion is there. And then my 18 year old just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago. Um, loves so i've noticed that when i when i'm because now he's home alone sometimes when i'm traveling and um i come back and there's some pots and pans so i know he's been cooking <laughs> they're all in the sink he hasn't learned the cleaning part yet but the cooking part so they do have a passion they love to try new things and uh i think that's a good skill moving forward you know just um just not having to eat out all the time just to be able to do it like maybe 10 basic things um, and I, you don't need to entertain with salmon at 19 years old, but I thought, I kind of thought it was cute. <laughs> I know. I was really impressed when you said that. <laughs> I know. I was like, who's paying for that? Am I paying for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to check my credit card. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, there you have it. Uh, a little bit of passion and a little bit of trial and error is starting yes. already. <laughs> I mean, when I was in college, I was an athlete. I, I, my roommates did all the cooking. I was never home at the time it would be before dinner. I didn't get home until six or seven, usually from practice. So um, my passion started after when I was fending for myself and I, you know, I was getting my master's in nutrition. And I thought that I wanted to go that route and be a nutritionist. And then I started cooking and learning about the foods that I was putting in front of me and my friends and my family. And um, so I took a different direction. So I, I still got the nutrition degree, but definitely felt in love with the cooking process and feeding people and putting things together that taste great and that are easy to do. And it's kind of evolved into, as you can tell, that I my whole outlook is quick, easy, healthy weeknight meals. And what can I do to get, that, to get there, whether it's cook once, eat twice, or handful of ingredients, but something super cool at the end. And, and so that's kind of turned into so it's my lifestyle, but it's turned into classes like this and the Food Network show and, and my other classes on, um, on Crapsy. All right, we have got one more comment that I want to give to you and uh, let you comment on because I think this is important. Uh, yes. And I wanted to point out that we should not pour grease down the drain, otherwise a plumber might eventually be needed. And that's not part of our recipe. So I wondered, Robin, if you'd like to speak a little bit to that, because that is a pretty common thing, right? Yeah. And that was what I was saying about tilting the pan and putting paper towels in the, in the corner. So that's one thing about not putting the grease down the drain. Um, it's not bacon grease, but it's still grease and it's not good. I grew up in a home that was built in 1916. So we never put any, well, you didn't even have a disposal. So um, but we know my mom, if she caught us putting anything down there. So I've just never done that, but 
it's also, so not only are not putting grease down the drain, which will cause a clog eventually, and sometimes odor that you can't get rid of, um, it's, a, it's just a lot easier to tilt the pan and put a, some paper toweling in there um, and take the grease out of the pan that way. So yes, but what we used to do growing up is we would pour the grease into a can, like an old soup can and um, like bacon grease. My mom would keep it in the fridge and then she would cook with it. So she was one of those that never wasted anything. So, well, she is, she's still alive. <laughs> so, sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but never, never wasted anything, compost pile, gardener. So we a lot of farm to table, Dolly's, her name, Dolly's farm to, to our table, um, and saved bacon grease and, and, and everything else to cook with, uh, at a future meal. And then you get all that bacon flavor. All right. Do you have time for one more question? Of course. Um, the, the beef is almost browned and I'm breaking it up as it cooks, as you always hear in uh, recipes and it's almost there. So I have time. Yes, absolutely. Great. Perfect. We'll go to Charlie's question then. Uh, Charlie says, I think that peppers can be a little bit bland. Are you planning on seasoning these with anything outside of seasoning the meat? I am not. And I agree. I actually, uh, I think raw peppers can be a little bland. I think green bell peppers can almost be a little acidic, oddly. Um, I prefer the orange, the yellow, and the red. They're sweeter but the beef filling is very seasoned and it will infuse to the inside of the pepper as it roasts. And then the outside of the pepper gets a little charred and caramelized. So I think you will find that this is more of a roasted pepper flavor than a raw pepper flavor that you would get on a crudite or in a salad. I think you'll find that the roasting process brings out and caramelizes and brings out the sweetness and amplifies the flavor of the pepper, which is the whole goal, which is another reason why if you were, I don't know if you were there when I said, but I keep the lids because I love roasted red peppers and I love all, you know, so roasted orange and green peppers and yellow peppers that works just as well. So we're amplifying the flavor by infusing the pepper from within and then the oven does the rest. That all right, that's, I'm going to hold the questions for there. We have a fun, more general one I'd like to save for the end at the moment. Okay. If you see your questions coming for Robin as we move through, we'll keep asking them as they come in. So go for it. Okay, perfect. So in this little bowl, I have all the seasonings that I mentioned before, but in case you joined us late, I'm going to do it again. It's a tablespoon of chili powder, teaspoon of ground cumin, teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. And that goes in to season the beef. You can see the chili powder was quite red. I don't know if you saw that coming out. Um, and I mentioned that if you do not have all those spices, you can use a packet of taco seasoning or a um, quarter cup if you buy the taco seasoning in bulk. And I've noticed now there are so many different taco seasonings. There's mild, there's spicy, there's original, there's lime. I mean, there's so many different things. So get what you love and then you know you will love it in the pepper. Um, and it's funny because most, I've noticed a lot of, I just did a stuffed pepper recipe for my cookbook. And a lot of them are just kind of like, it's like a bolognese sauce inside with rice inside. This is so fun because it's taco flavored. So the kids are going to love it. The adults are going to love it. It's great for a party. Um, as I mentioned before, one pepper can serve two as an appetizer. So if you're going to do four of these, and I've got serving of eight, which would be a great appetizer for a party going forward or a football game day or something. So I am letting this go for 30 seconds to a minute. I say this in all of my recipes that you add the herbs and then I say, cook for a minute until fragrant. And what that means is the oils are being released. The essence of the herbs and spices are being released. So right now I smell chili powder. I can clearly smell the floral oregano. That means they're ready. They are have perfuming the meat. So rather than just dump the spices in uh, and, and then the sauce or put the spices in the sauce, which I've seen other re recipes do, I like to give them a quick little head start to release their essence and aroma and flavor into the meat. And salt and pepper is over there. So I have to go get that. <laughs> the good thing I put pants on. <laughs> So I, um, I'm just going to do a little bit, of, a lot of salt comes out of this. So that was just like two cranks, probably about a half a teaspoon and then about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, but you can uh, season to taste. So, um, everybody always asks me. So before you ask, I got these at Sir La Table. 
because every every time I use these, which I love, um, I hope they still have them, but because I, I got them a year ago. But yes, yeah, so that's where I got the salt and pepper because I love freshly ground everything. And then, okay, so here's the cup of tomato sauce and Kevin is Kevin, right? With the tomatoes and the tomato paste. Uh, let me look up I again. Think so. Yes. Okay, so that's where you're gonna put your chopped tomatoes, hopefully with a lot of the seeds left on the cutting board. And then, um, and a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. And this is one of those situations where with those raw tomatoes, you might need to add more tomatoes. Because you want your filling to be, again, this you want this to be kind of like a bolognese sauce. Um, and if the raw tomatoes are making it dry, because this is the only liquid we have, you need to add more tomatoes or um, some beef broth. Beef broth would work too. Or water. Because, you know, with the seasoning packet, if you're going to use a seasoning packet, it calls for water anyway with a pound of ground beef. I'm going to make sure this is off. So that's it for the beef filling. Pretty easy, right? And I was going slowly. You could do that in five minutes if you weren't talking and if you had your pan already hot, like I didn't. So in this bowl, I'm going to combine. Here, I'll move those out of the way. Oh, I have this out for a reason. So I don't know if you guys have cutting boards that slide around. And that's, I hate, first of all, I hate when that happens, drives me crazy, but also it's dangerous and you can cut yourself. So I wanted to remember to tell you that if you have a cutting board, whether it's plastic or wooden and it slides around your counter, I bought this on Amazon, a whole roll of the, this um, non-stick grip. It, it could be a shelf liner or it's a grip. I bought a whole roll for maybe $5, I think, and it's I still have it. It's going to take me years to go through it. I just cut off a piece that I need, and I put it under my cutting board, and in about a month, I, I, I change that. That will stop the slipping and protect you from cutting yourself. So I wanted to remember to tell you that. All right, in this bowl, I'm going to put the pre-cooked rice. This can be brown rice, jasmine, basmati. I a brand that I love brown, red, white, wild. You can use any rice you want that you think everybody will like. It's about a cup, a cup and a quarter for a pound of ground beef. And we're gonna, this is um, cold because it was in the fridge from last night, but that's totally fine. And then I'm just gonna add the beef mixture to that. So this is a great use for your uh, takeout, your Chinese takeout, Japanese takeout leftover rice. And I mentioned earlier too, that I love those uh, 90 second rice packets. I think those are super convenient when my son says, can I have a Chipotle copycat? And he likes the chicken burritos. I know I can grab one of those 90 second pouches and not have to wait 20 minutes for the rice to cook. So um, I just love having them as a stash in, this, uh, in my pantry. Okay, so here the beef filling is coming together. Doesn't that look, I mean, you can just eat this right now except that the rice is, is a little cold, mine is. And then to this, I'm gonna add that cheese blend I mentioned, a half a cup, there's a cup and a half in the whole recipe, half a cup goes in here and the other cup goes on top. Um, it doesn't have to be accurate, you can go three quarter, three quarter, it doesn't really matter, um, if you want more cheese in the filling. So this, again, is a blend of cheeses, let's try to get it where it's not like glare. So it's got cheddar, you can see, which is the orange, Monterey Jack, it melts like a blend of cheddar and, and mozzarella. That's why I love it. I always have it. I buy it in big, huge bags. I think it's a pound bag of, uh, of the cheese because there's always a reason for it. And it looks prettier too. I think it just looks pretty to have melty cheese on top of, um, on top of things, melt and, and the color of the, the cheddar. So that already starts to melt as it gets blended. Any questions for me, Leah? Uh, we've got a couple in here right now. Uh, Mandy is wondering if nutrition information is available for this recipe. Oh, I didn't do the nutrition information for this recipe. I don't know the exact the exact numbers. I used to analyze every single recipe I ever wrote, uh, like eight out of 10 cookbooks. Um, I do know, I mean, I, so I'm not even going to guess on the number. I would, well, I guess I will guess on the number, but if you do a I would say there's, and this is this is based on years and years and years of me analyzing recipes. I guarantee you this is somewhere around three, 350 calories. 
per pepper, maybe less. I'm just I'm trying to think of the rice going in, the beef going in, and if you divide this by six, it'll it'll it'd be probably less than that. I did a cookbook. It was 500 recipes with five ingredients or less, 500 calories or less, and I analyzed every single one. It took forever, but I learned that um, 500 calories is a lot. Like it takes a lot to get there. So a lot, most of my recipes were, were well under three. So that's why I'm going, I'm judging by that. We're doing, you know, maybe a three quarters of a cup of this mixture per pepper um, and it can serve up to six people. So I'm going to guess this is somewhere below 400 calories. And don't even ask me about points because I don't know that. I definitely don't know that. <laughs> I do know also, you know, if um, anybody's interested, a lot of those apps that are out there, if you plug a recipe in a lot of times, it'll spit some information back at you, including protein and carbohydrate breakdown and things yes. like that too. And sometimes they even, um, you can even, I've noticed you can scan, you can even scan your food mm -hmm. and it tries to figure it out. So I think that's pretty cool. All right. So um, I've got my peppers in a second this is an oven proof skillet. I like it because it's heavy. I like it because it has sides. So in case it tipped over that said a shallow baking dish works in the picture. I used a cast iron. Um, it's like a more of a griddle, but it had a little lip. I liked that. I thought it made a great presentation. I've done this in all kinds of different, this one's baked in a ceramic uh, pie plate. So really whatever you have, it all, it all works. I just love this as a presentation and I love taking my cookware to the table. So that's why I chose it. Uh, so you just start filling. And I, and I did, um, when I made the ones yesterday to show you for today, I realized they look so much better when they're not leveled off at the top, when they are heaping. So that's what I'm going to do for these. So, and use a small spoon. I didn't use the big spoon that I was just mixing with because then it would be all over the place. So, and you, you don't want to jam it in. I'm going to say loosely packed. So you want to make sure there's no gaps or air, but you don't also want to jam it in. You want to make sure that it all gets evenly heated while it's in the oven. Now, there's another comment in here. Charlie is planning on making these for the game. It's game day tomorrow uh, and pack them up for the grill. So I'm wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about anybody that's going to do any portion of this as a make ahead. Um, yes. Any adjustments that they should make? Yes. So um, if you look at the notes and the introduction to the recipe, this is an excellent make ahead recipe. You will get to the point right now. Well, after I put the cheese on it, before it goes in the oven. That is, um, that's where you stop, cool it a little bit. If the meat is really hot, if your rice was hot and the meat is hot, cool it so you don't lower the temperature of your refrigerator. Um, and then cover with plastic wrap or press and seal or something to, um, to cover it, put it in the fridge. And then when 30 minutes before you're ready to bake and you said grill, mm -hmm. uh, pull it out. That way you're not taking it for, a cold stuffed pepper and trying to heat it through in a short amount of time, 30 minutes before do that with everything that you're about that you've, that you've made ahead is best to bring it out 30 minutes before you cook it. So it cooks properly. Um, and then on the grill, I guess you have your plan, but I would cover with foil. Um, and then I guess you have your plan for how you cook on your grill because all grills are different, but yes, cover with foil for the first 15 minutes and then uncover to melt the cheese at the end for the last five. So I hope that answered that question, but yes, great make it. Oh, and um, these can stay in the refrigerator for up to two days, 48 hours. I think in my notes, I said 24, but you really can go 48. If you want to make this for Sunday, if you want to do it today, you want to make it for Sunday's game, um, that works too, or uh, entertaining if you want to have it finished, or what if you want to do this for Halloween and then you don't want to have it cooking on Halloween because you're answering the door so you could do these in advance as well. All right, that gets to most of our questions. I'm still hanging on to one for the very end. Yeah, uh, okay. So as you're filling any other details you wanna add, I'm gonna let you go ahead and- Okay, cool, cool. Ahead. So again, I just wanna stress that this is one of those recipes that you can completely customize. Use turkey, use chicken. Um, for a vegetarian one, use mushrooms. I love mushrooms as a substitute. 
um, you know, you need a couple a couple pounds to cook down to to be have this be really mushroomy. But um, that absolutely works too. There's the one with the face. Hopefully, you can see that ghoulish. Yes. Guy. All right. So um, yes, completely customizable with the kind of rice you use, the seasoning you use, and the meat you use. So it's great. But look how much is left over. So I could have filled two more peppers. That's why the recipe calls for six. Um, I guess these were not as big as I thought. So what I will do though, what I love to do is now Luke, my 18 year old, will devour this today after school. So I'm gonna save this. I'm not gonna stuff it into a pepper. I'm gonna put it into a container for me to reheat later, put some cheese over top and he will love that. You can put it in tacos. You can put it in soft or crunchy tortillas. Um, he will love that. So that's what you would do with that. Or you would just do six peppers as the recipe calls for. And then um, top with the remaining cheese. I like to let some of the cheese fall into the pan. Um, it frizzles and sizzles. It does not burn. And it, um, because we're not, it's not in the oven that long and it makes for a nice cheesy base. When you pull the peppers out, you get that cheese pull. So I love that. So don't worry about like, oh no, it's in the bottom of the pan. So let's see if I can do this where it won't tip. I did this last time for Craftsy and one of my little cinnamon rolls went and then rolled right on. <laughs> so it was really funny for me anyway. So there they, there they go. And again, um, oh, by the way, I did not coat the pan. That was the other thing I wanted to tell you. If you look at a lot of stuffed pepper recipes, they put them in a shallow baking dish and they add about an inch of water. I don't. That steams the peppers and um, I forget who said it, thought they were bland. I don't like steamed peppers. I like roasted peppers. So this again is a seasoned pan. If you have a, you're using a baking dish, I would just coat it with a sheen of olive oil or um, spray with cooking spray, but let these peppers roast around the outside to get that caramelization. If they get a little charred, fantastic. That's more flavor. So I, that's my preference um, to not, to not steam them. And, uh, and I think you'll, I think you'll agree. Then I'm going to put, so I happen to get like really good stems. I got lucky with these guys, right? So I am going to put these lids, the pepper tops right in the pan. Not, I mean, I really think it makes for such a prettier presentation and you have all the extra roasted pepper goodness. You could fold it into a dip. You can make a hummus with it. You could just, just put it on top of your salads. I adore roasted peppers of all kinds. And now we have a whole bunch of extra. So with this, there's two different ways you can do it. If everything's really hot, your filling, your rice, everything, you can go straight into a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes, just really to melt the cheese and, and char the peppers. If you started with cold rice, like me, cover with foil, spray the foil with cooking spray. So it doesn't, so the cheese doesn't stick, go 15 minutes that way, then remove the foil and five more minutes just to melt the cheese. Um, and they're finished. And I, I made them yesterday. So any questions there? Okay. Uh, we have a couple comments that we'll talk about when you're done. We'll let you wrap okay. up. So I did something different yesterday. So, um, a, I used a different pan and I used different peppers. So just to show you, cause you saw the picture of the jack-o'-lanterns when you signed up, when you signed up for the class, you, you know what they look like finished. What I did with these, I did red and green. So if you want to go into the holidays and I threw an orange one in there for good measure and you can see what the roasted pepper lid looks like. That's so much fabulous flavor in there. And anybody notice that the cheese looks a little different on top. Instead, I went a different route and I, t I made these more of a Greek style and I used feta on top. So I did a very similar filling and I, um, I put feta on top. So it would just be a cup, just, just kind of to show you the versatility of these peppers that, and I, and these baked just until the feta was golden brown. So it was literally 15 minutes at 350. The peppers were perfectly charred. We have the lids and I really and like going into the holidays, you could do a bunch of red and green and serve them that way. And then you could also just do mozzarella. You could do so many different things. And that I kind of wanted to show you that there it's the same, basically the same process but you customize it to suit you and your family and your friends and what they like. And for serving, you can do one pepper and have it be a meal with a salad or bread or something on the side, 
or you can cut them in half and serve them open face and have it be a side dish or an appetizer for a dinner party or, or a party where you have a whole bunch of appetizers. And I think that would be, and I can cut one in half if you want to see. I, I mean, I can cut one of the finished ones in half on my non-skin mats. Yes. All right, and while you're doing that, I'm going to dig into some of these comments that came in towards the end. Um, so one of our viewers, Cheryl, says, love stuffed peppers. They freeze wonderfully. And then Sandra followed up by asking, how do you freeze these? Oh, perfect. So uh, cooling them, so once they're baked, well, you can do two things. You can do what Charles is going to do and make them today in the future, and then you can freeze them, wrap them tightly, uh, cover the pan tightly, freeze for up to three months, thaw them overnight in the refrigerator, and again, pull them 30 minutes before baking. That's if you freeze them pre-baked. Say you have leftovers and you want to freeze these. My, opinion, my advice would be airtight container. You either wrap them individually in freezer wrap um, and then in a plastic bag if you only have one. Uh, and they'll freeze for up to three months and or you can uh, put them in an airtight container label and date it i always tell people that because i have things in there i'm like what was that uh so label and date it and again three months on that fall overnight in the refrigerator and pull 30 minutes before reheating in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes the goal is to get the internal temperature above 140 145 so if you have a meat thermometer put these when you reheat them put them in a 350 oven until you get to 145 when inserted right down into the center. Then you know you're safe. Because just because food is frozen doesn't mean it can't make you sick when you reheat it if it's not been reheated to above 140. So I always say 145 to be safe. Okay, we have another comment here. Uh, one of our viewers uh, has a child that kids in general, Cheryl, Kids do not like the peppers, part of the stuffed peppers. Okay. So likes to put in the extra that you were saying, you're just going to give yourself yes. later in, in the pan with yes. the peppers. Uh, is there a, an adjustment oh. that you would make to make that work the best? You, I wouldn't put it in the pan with the peppers. Okay. I would put it in a separate little, well, you don't even have to cook it. It's already all cooked. You could just put it in a serving dish and sprinkle the cheese over top and keep it warm while you cook the peppers. Or you could put it in a, your smallest little casserole dish that you have and cover it with foil. And I'll show I have a couple of, well, first I'll show you the inside. Look how pretty that is. Can you all see that? Is there a glare? I'm not seeing one. So no, I can see it. Yeah, it looks good. So this is the one with feta on top. Whoop, you can see it by feta. Just what well, we just lost some feta to the counter. But so we put these all on a platter, all different colors, red, green, orange, such a pretty fun appetizer. I did this, um, we have things called pasta parties. My boys run cross country. And the night before I meet, one of the families hosts and does a whole bunch of pasta for the team. And I was testing this recipe. This was back when I was testing this recipe a month or so ago. And so I had these on the side of all the pasta and they were the first thing to go. And I was like, wait, you're supposed to eat the pepper. You're racing to it. But anyway, they all did great. Some PR, they broke their personal record. So I was like, oh, stuffed peppers now. Every pasta party. So I just, I think this is so pretty um, when it's cut in half too. So for your little one, I have, excuse me for leaving the scene, but I have these little dishes that I love that are, um, I got them at the grocery store. And then... You can't see in my messy cabinet, can you know? And then this is another little tiny casserole dish that it would be perfect for. If you buy one, you'll use it all the time for the picky eaters in your house because you can separate the food out. I would put the beef mixture in there, which I think I'm going to do for Luke. I'll use this, put the cheese on top and have it ready for later. Or put it in for the last five minutes with the peppers to melt the cheese on top. So I hope that answered that question because you want to still be able to do it and have everybody enjoy the filling. Um, you could also do a loaded baked potato with this if he likes baked potatoes instead of the pepper. I've done that before too. If people that don't like peppers, I just give them a potato or a sweet potato. And I've done that with sloppy joes for gluten-free people. So. <laughs> all right, we have a couple comments. First of all, a few viewers think that that feta looks a little bit like snow. So you're really oh. getting into the holiday spirit there. Yes. Oh my God, that's a great idea. See, you all are so craftsy. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then Nancy uh, wants to talk a little bit about veggies. So to get veggies in there, Nancy would add, would puree veggies and add them. And wants to know, would I need to make any other adjustments to the recipe no. to eat that? That's a genius idea. Um, I would. So what I would do first, so just like you're going to do a sofrito for a bolognese sauce or any starting any soup with the onions, carrots, celery. I don't know which veggies you're thinking, um, but carrots and celery maybe or spinach even. Um, saute that, get that really, um, give it a minute before the meat goes in. That's what I do. Just like you're going to start any kind of a meat sauce, get those vegetables caramel or softened, not caramelized, like more translucent first. Um, do you, I'm, I'm assuming you have to puree them so that they're not detectable. So they won't need that long. Otherwise, if you just finally mince them, they need about two to three minutes to get translucent. Then the beef goes in and nothing else changes. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, I know it's helpful, but they are getting the pepper unless it's the one that's going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and we're going to stay on veggies for the next question okay. too. So Terry's just tuning in, uh, missed the portion where we went over the ingredients and okay. just caught, um, uh, is coincidentally making stuffed mushrooms. Oh. Once you know if these are vegetarian, and I'd love you to talk a little more. You mentioned mushrooms as a vegetarian option, so yes. talk a little bit about that. Yes. So, yes, clearly you missed when I put that pound of red meat in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's totally customizable, which is what I love, because I mentioned you could use turkey. I was kidding. Um, turkey or chicken you could use. Obviously, that's not vegetarian. But you need about two cups of ground meat to go with the one cup of rice. So two cups of sauteed mushrooms would be a great diced, really fine of sauteed mushrooms. And I'm a huge fan of cremini mushrooms. I think they are like button mushrooms escalated, greater depth of flavor, more earthy, more robust, or you could do a combination of all different wild mushrooms. Absolutely. That would work. And, um, that's all you need to do. Just saute them first. And you know, you have to buy more than you think you need because they shrink a lot. They give off a lot of liquid. And then you really wouldn't have to change anything else. I just say, make sure it's finely diced so that when you mix it with the rice, it's very similar in size. Like the ground beef is very similar in size to the rice. So it kind of forms a nice little packed pepper. Um, you could even do this mixture to stuff the mushroom. So you would have, unless you want to do the peppers, but um, this whole filling would be great in mushrooms as well. And so would your mushroom filling. So I hope that answered the question, but absolutely, yes, you can definitely do it. All right, fantastic. Uh, Robin, I'm going to slide in the question I've been hanging on to before I give you the opportunity to kind of do your finishing thoughts on this recipe. Okay. Uh, so this kind of brings us back to something that we were talking about earlier uh, with college kids. Um, and Leanne wants to know if you are considering maybe in the future writing a book about teaching college kids how to cook. Uh, I'm sure Leanne is not the only parent that is a little worried about a son yes. in college not knowing how to cook. <laughs> Yes, that's interesting. I haven't thought about that, but I will now. <laughs> I noticed that, you know, I don't know if it was the pandemic or not, but more kids are in more of an a, apartment setting, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And they have single rooms and a shared kitchen, so there will be more cooking, I find. Um, my son was only in an apartment and not a dorm because of COVID, and so he they were um, online only. So now he's in a dorm and he's missing real food. Like I said, how is the food? And he's in a pretty good college and all colleges are supposed to have this fantastic food now. And I said, how is the food? Thinking it was gonna be great. Cause you know, they kind of tell you that when you're touring, how fabulous everything is. And he wrote bleak. Uh, That's, the word, yes. That's the word he used, bleak. And I'm thinking, okay, is it bleak or is it because, you know, I cook basically for a living. Um, but no, his friends agreed. So I think more kids, and I think the millennial, like this age group, they want to cook. They want to know where their food comes from. There's definitely food preferences and intolerances and allergies. And so being able to have control over that, I think uh, you're onto something. Because I think these kids are going to want to be a part of what's going in their bodies earlier on in the process than say I was when I waited till after I was called, out of college. So you think they'll read it though? I mean, <laughs> it's gonna have to be really easy <laughs> and everything cooked on a burner. Oh, it would be a perfect gift for college going away. 
I think there's one um, cook at college cooking for dummies. You know, the, the dummy, the whole dummy line. Uh -huh. there, might, there might be one out there already. I think I remember seeing it, but yeah, the goal, and I think it would absolutely have to be an app <laughs> because I can't imagine a college kid with, but that's a great thought. And I will definitely, uh, that could be cookbook number 12 because I'll have two in college next year. So. All right. Well, that's the end of the questions that I have. Uh, we do have a little bit of time left. So Robin, I'm going to give you a moment to wrap up, give us some final thoughts on what we just cooked together, and then also make sure to let us know where we can find you in the future. Okay, great. So um, I did my jack-o'-lantern beefy taco stuffed, but really long name, but basically stuffed peppers in a cute, fun way for the holidays. Um, tried to express to you how customizable these are for finicky eaters or for those of you that already have ground turkey and chicken and want to make these tonight. Um, the peppers, we learned that you can have three or four humps and they turn out the same. Any pepper color works. I find the, the sweeter ones to be the yellow, orange, and red. All peppers start out green and as they mature, they get sweeter and their color changes. So know that shopping um, and have fun with this recipe. Do what you want. If you don't want to use rice, choose another grain. Quinoa would be super fun. I, I know people have their favorite grains. Um, you could use couscous. You can really have some fun with the recipe and make something different. Think about it for game day. Think about it for a busy weeknight. Prep ahead, freeze some. Um, I'm trying to express all that in the hour that we had together that uh, this is the way I cook. So it's not just the peppers. It's this is the way I kind of think moving forward. Um, all my meals. What can I do to make weeknight meals easier and less stressful and delicious and nutritious all at the same time? So all those things I'm talking about, all those recipes, I do them every day and I post them on my blog, which is on my website, which is Robin Miller Cooks. And as soon as the recipe goes up on my blog, I immediately put it on my two Facebooks, my Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and five or so Pinterest boards. So I'm kind of out there. Um, but Robin Miller Cooks is the main um, landing pad where you can be, you'll find the blog and the links to all my social uh, channels. And um, I, I do Instagram stories and Facebook stories every day too. Mostly about food, sometimes my kids and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable, of course, of course. Uh, well, that is all that we have time for today. So all that I have left is a little bit of reminder to leave you with the viewers. Uh, so first of all, thank you to Robin for cooking us through this fantastic stuffed pepper recipe. And we would love for you, if you are cooking today's recipe or doing any of the projects from this week, uh, we want you to use a hashtag so we can see what the community is up to. That hashtag for social media is share craftsy uh, for game day. If you're cooking this recipe or doing any of the crafts from earlier this week we would love to see it hashtag share craftsy is what you want to use so that we can see all of those projects and in closing we have to say thank you for joining us for our entire week of craft -oween. the mini series has been so much fun and you can find today's recipe for the stuffed peppers by clicking the link in the description and you can also still download any of the free patterns by clicking that link as well so the entire mini series is available for you to rewatch. check out those patterns and we will be releasing the video instructions for the trick or treat bag with the applique next week. So make sure to sign up for the Craftsy newsletter and keep an eye on your email for updates. So on behalf of Robin, the Craftsy team and everybody else, my name is Leah. Thank you so much for joining us this week and until the next time we see you, happy crafting. Thank you.